Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at sedimentary environments and sedimentary rocks. So now we're going to spend a few slides thinking about the characteristics of sandstones and their formation. So in the case of sandstones, as you can see from this picture here, the clasts are visible to the naked eye. And they'll range in size typically from about 2 millimeters to around 1 16th of a millimeter. So that's, you know, pretty small, but you can just about see them with the naked eye or with a, a hand lens. So in terms of sandstones themselves, they tend to form bedded sequences. And the beds of sandstone can vary in thickness from centimeters all the way up to tens of meters in thickness. So there's quite a lot of variation in, in the, the thickness of the sandstone beds. And that's obviously going to be a reflection of the type of environment in which that sand is being deposited. So the types of environments where we might expect to find sands forming so if we think about on the land there are two main environments in which we would expect to find sands sandstones forming on a regular basis there are sand dunes and rivers so sand dunes obviously form in desert environments and we've already gone and discussed how the uh, concentration of sand sized sediments in these desert environments is a reflection of the fact that the sediment is being moved by the wind so obviously we know this is going to be uh, quite a, a sandy sediment. We also know that in desert environments the sand gets transported around for a very, very long time because the wind blows it in all directions. And so this means that your sand is your sandy sediment is going to be quite well rounded and it's often going to be very well sorted as well. And so this is going to you know, give us a hint of about um, the formation of the sandstone. Now, we're also going to look for features such as cross beds because, of course, we're dealing with dunes here. And so we would expect cross beds to be forming as part of the sedimentary depositional process. We would also keep our, our, our eyes out for other features, especially fossils, because it's a desert environment. We would expect that there's a reasonable chance we may find the odd reptile fossil mixed in with the sediment as well. And of course, that's going to be quite helpful if we're trying to work out the exact environment of deposition for the, for the sandstone. Now, in the case of rivers, we aren't going to have sands forming on the floodplain. That environment's going to be dominated by muds, so silt and clay size class. The sand is actually going to be present in the channel itself. And so what we're going to look for is we're obviously going to be looking for uh, certain sedimentary features that show us that we have unidirectional flow. The water is just moving in one direction. So we're going to look for things like asymmetrical ripples, and that's going to tell us, right, the, the transporting medium was just going one way and that was it, which is exactly what you would expect in a river. We're also going to look for other features within this river sediment. So we're going to look for things like freshwater fossils as well. That's going to be another indicator that we're dealing with a freshwater environment. In terms of the uh, the sandstones that form in river environments, they tend to be a little uh, less well sorted. You'll often have a, a range of class sizes going from coarse sand to medium sand but uh, and they'll often form in three dimensions they'll have a shape which is often referred to as a shoestring morphology because essentially it looks like a, a shoelace or a snake so when we're thinking about sands being deposited on along coastlines essentially the uh, primary environment of deposition is going to be the beach so obviously in the beach we're going to have sediment being moved around by the action of waves and so this means we are very likely to find symmetrical ripples forming and so we are going to look for these symmetrical ripples because they're going to tell us we have bi-directional flow so the current is moving in two directions so when a wave comes off of the uh, the sea it's going to hit our beach it's going to come up the beach so that sediment being moved one way then the wave is going to slow down stop and then it's going to return back down the beach that's the wave going the other way so that those are our two current directions one going up the beach one coming down the beach and this is going to result in the formation of symmetrical ripples. And you can, you know, you can maybe see the traces of some ripples just coming along here like so. And you know, when you look at them, you see, well, yes, they appear to be approximately symmetrical in shape. But if you were to get closer to the ground and have a really good look, you would probably find some nice symmetrical ripples in there. Now, on top of that, we would also look for other features which would help us to definitively state that this was being deposited in a beach environment. So we would obviously 
obviously look for features such as saltwater fossils, which would obviously suggest that we're on the coast. Now, as we've already touched on in the past, behind our beach sediments, we are going to have dune sediments, which are being moved about by the wind. And they, on, you know, on a superficial level, are going to look very similar to the types of dune sediments we would get in a desert environment. But, as we've also discussed, there are going to be some features that will allow us to distinguish between cross-bedded sandstones from a desert and cross-bedded sandstones from a beach. And the primary thing we're going to be looking for, once again, is fossils. And so we're going to find fossils, we're going to identify right did this animal live in a freshwater environment, did it live in a saltwater environment, or did it like to live in a desert environment? And so by having this information, we can work out you know, what environment our sandy sediment was being deposited in. Another common uh, environment which occurs along the coastline um, where we have sand being deposited in quite large quantities are deltas. Now, in the case of deltas, you often have a mix of sediments, so you have a lot of mud, but you also have a lot of sand, because remember, a delta forms when we have a river entering a body of water, and that body of water could be a sea, an ocean, or a large lake. And so this causes the river water to decelerate very, very quickly, so it slows down, and this, of course, means it loses energy very, very quickly, and so it starts depositing sediment. And this you know, deep position of sediment and its build-up at the mouth of the river ends up forming a delta. Now, we've already discussed how rivers will often be quite rich in both muddy and sandy sediment. And so it's not particularly surprising that we will see sandstones appearing within our delta sequence. Now, what can also happen is, is the sediment being deposited is, as I said, a muddy, sandy sediment. But if that sediment is exposed to waves it will be cleaned up a little bit. So every time a wave hits a muddy sand, it will pick up some of the mud, the very fine particles, and it will pull them out into open water, so it will get rid of them. So it's not uncommon for these muddy, sandy sediments to be cleaned up due to waves. That, of course, you know, means that the sediment in question has to be exposed to wave action. And so some of these sandstone layers here may well represent muddy sediment that was exposed to wave action, and that helped to clean out quite a lot of the finer muddy particles, leaving behind a relatively uh, homogeneous sandstone. So the final environment where we would expect to find sandstones forming in large quantities are on the continental shelf and the continental slope. So of course these are environments which are constantly submerged and we're in the marine setting now, so we're in a saltwater environment. So in terms of the continental shelf, well, sands don't just appear at beaches. They actually continue a long way off the coast into the water. So you know, we're going to have these sandy sediments that we get in the beaches extending for large distances underwater. And so these sandy sediments are, of course, uh, never exposed to the atmosphere. They're constantly covered in salt water, and so we classify them as marine. And so we're going to get lots of these sandstones forming along on the continental shelf, this shallow bit of seafloor, which is rather close to the coasts. Now, as we've also discussed, the continental shelf is between 0 and 200 metres deep. Once you get to the edge of the shelf, you drop down the slope, which is a rather steep uh, area of seafloor. And once again, we get uh, sandstones being deposited in the slope environment as well. And they're being deposited in that environment due to underwater landslides, which we call turbidity currents. So the turbidity currents that come down the continental slope are going to consist of a mixture of sandy and muddy sediments which have come off the continental shelf. And obviously this turbidity current is going to come hurtling down the continental slope, but then the gradient's going to change at the bottom of the continental slope. You're going to go from the steep gradient and all of a sudden the gradient's going to flatten out as you move from the continental uh, slope onto the deep ocean seafloor. And of course at this point as the gradient begins to shallow, the turbidity current loses velocity so it loses energy and so it has to start depositing the sediment. And so obviously because it's the heavier sediment it's going to deposit the sand first, then it's going to deposit silt size class and then finally it's going to deposit mud size class. And so these turbidity currents are going to 
produce a sequence of graded beds going from sands at the bottom to muds at the top. Now this has just been an overview of a few environments in which sandy sediments are going to be deposited. Sandstones are very very common rocks and sandy sediments are deposited in a very large range of different environments so we've only covered a few of them and just bear that in mind. Anyway thank you for watching everybody and have a good day.